So this is a quick video that looks at how to manage organizations and some of the different functions that are available to you based upon how we've chosen to set up organizations in Canvas. So one of the changes that have been made since moving to Canvas is you'll note that for repetitive organizations, so organizations that in the past would have been organization name and then class of 2020 or based upon the admission of that class what we've done now is we have basically just created a general organization so as you can see here TUC OBGYN core rotation and then in the settings what you'll find is if you go into the sections you'll see that there's a general section where all the instructors have been added and then each of those classes or admission cohorts have its own section. Um, so you can use the same organization year after year. And beyond that, the organizations operate the exact same way as courses. So as you can see from this one, we're using a pages model here. So you literally go as you click from one page to another page the same way you would if this was any other course. Another model that you can use in setting it up as you can see here, here's another organization that we've set up and you can see the different cohorts that are here. And when you click on each of those cohorts, it takes you to the modules for that particular cohort. So you'll see it'll jump down now to the fall 18 modules and that's how this is set up. So this is a modules formatted one. So regardless of how you set up the course in terms of pages or modules, what will happen is when you're getting the enrollment done from semester to semester, your Canvas admin will enroll them into a specific semester or a specific cohort based upon that particular group. Now what this allows you to do is it allows you to create a couple of different things in your organization. The first is that if you are in the organization and you want to assign an assignment to a specific group of students, um, what you'd want to do is you would create an assignment. So I'm just going to call this one here temporary for now because that's what we're going to use it as and let's make it worth 10 points and I'm going to save it for now and let's go in and take a look and when I go in to edit the assignment normally I'd put in the description here and everything else and when I get down to the bottom you can see there's this assign to option Instead of assigning it to everyone, I can actually assign it to a specific group of students. So if I just wanted to assign it to the joint class of 2021, it'll get all of the students in there. And I can give them a date of having it due on the 26th of this month. If I wanted to use the same assignment for the next group of students, so say I wanted to use it now, it's 12 months later and I'm creating the assignment again for the next class of students, I can then assign it to just the class of 2022 oops, and give it a due date. Since we're 12 months into the future, this is my fictional 12 months into the future and we'll make it due on the 28th this time. So you can use the same assignment again and again and just assign it to the section of students that you want it assigned to. The other option that you have is you do have the ability to create an individual assignment for each section and you can actually group them that way. So if you look at this example, from an organizational standpoint you can see this is the fall 2019 and here are all of the things that the fall 2019 students are expected to submit and then once I get down to the bottom of that list here are the ones that the summer 2019 students are expected to submit and what you'll notice it's the exact same assignment so I've made an assignment for each of the 
cohorts in here. So if I've got five cohorts in here, I have the same assignment repeated five times. And then when I actually make the assignment or I assign the assignment to available, I just make it available to everyone, but then only the students that are in that particular cohort or in that particular group would actually complete the assignment. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, the first way is a little bit cleaner. Uh, this way is, uh, in terms of your grade book and stuff like that, this way is a little bit easier. So it's up to you in terms of how you manage that. So one of the areas that the way in which you set up assignments will make a difference is when you look at the grade book. So if we look at this first one as an example, so here's my temporary assignment. You can see I've assigned it to the joint class of 2021 for one date, and then I've assigned it to the joint class of 2022 for a date 12 months in the future. Now, when I click on the grade book, in most cases, by default, you will see up here, it will say showing all sections. And what it does there is it gives me a listing of students, regardless of which section they are put in, in alphabetical order. Now, if I want to see just the students in the section of 2020 that I've assigned it to, I can just click on that and you'll see here are just the list of 2020. Now, if you remember, I didn't assign it to the class of 2020, this particular assignment. So you can see there's a gray box here that doesn't allow me to do anything. Whereas if I were to go to the class of 2021 to that section, you can see now I have the ability to grade each of these. Now, if you are doing it the other model where you have all of the assignments for one class in a group, and then you have all of the assignments for the next class in another group, that's going to make a big difference in terms of how your gradebook looks. So if I go into the gradebook for that kind of course, what you will find is that while I can still look at the students by section, so as you can see here, right now I am just showing the section of summer 2019. I could look at, say, just the fall of 20. 17 and as I do that you can see okay here's some assignments that they were assigned and then here's a whack of assignments that they weren't assigned and then there's another one that they were assigned and then here's a whole bunch that they weren't assigned and then here's a whole bunch more they were assigned and so on and in some cases not all of these depending upon how they set it up were specifically assigned to their group so you get all of the assignments that are listed here so if you have six classes or six sections and they were all assigned field study, it was just in six different groups, what ends up happening is throughout the course of this big long scrolling thing here, field study will show up six times. And if I've assigned it to everybody, what's going to end up happening is that it will show up for all of these groups. So some of these aren't even the ones that I'm looking for. So for example, um, as we're coming across here again now, let's see if we can't find field study again in a, another column. So here's our field study again. This is the third or fourth time we've seen it now. So it makes it a little bit more unwieldy in your gradebook when you do it in the model that you create an assignment for each group as opposed to creating a single assignment that only the class of that's only assigned to the section for the class of 2020 or the class of 2021. The other thing that you can do with these organizations now is that in addition to having everybody in a class, and you can see they'll tell you what section they're in right here, you can actually create different groups. So I've created a group set here, so I clicked on plus group set and created a group set called class of dot dot dot. And when I click on that, you'll see here are my three classes right now. And I've just already gone and moved each of the students into the appropriate class. So there's 49 students in the class of 2020. There's 48 students in the class of 2021. When I click on the three dots over right here, 
the first option that it gives me is allows me to visit the group home page. When I click on that, now this is the home page for only students that have been assigned to that particular group. So if I were to click on people here, it would only show me the people in this organization that are in the class of 2021 group. So if there were specific files or pages that I wanted to create or announcements that I wanted to give that I didn't want the other sections, in this case the class of 2020 and the class of 2022 to be able to see, I can post them here in this group homepage. And you can see by clicking on the switch group here, it'll allow me to go back and forth between the different groups that I have in this group set. Or I can just click on organization here and it takes me back to the main organization page. So there's a lot of functionality that you have here within the different options of the organization and in terms of what it will allow you to do in the case of canvas this actually is a course in canvas now it's a manually created course or a locally created course which means essentially that the local canvas admin was the one that created this course and they are the one that populates the students and faculty and staff into this particular course otherwise it operates the exact same way that every other course in Canvas, regardless if it's an automated course or a manual course, um, the functionality is the exact same. So all of these functions you could also do in any of the courses that you teach that get added into Banner. We've just set the organizations up specifically this way to leverage these things to make the management of the organizations a little bit easier on the administrative side while providing you with the same functionality that you've expected from when you used to use organizations in the previous LMS. So that was a quick video that looked at how we've set up organizations in Canvas on the back end and the different functionality that you have as a instructional user in these different Canvas organizations.